if you will, looking at the central atoms there, these are the different types of hybridization patterns in, in, in atoms. There. Now what we want you to be able to do here is that given the formu formula, given the structure of a compound there, glycine for example, and amino acids there, we need you to be able to identify the hybridization pattern on each of the central atoms that we are um, um, pointing to. So in this case, nitrogen there, and again, the hybridization pattern only depends on the electron, uh, electron pair configuration. So in this case, I should have uh, shrunk these two dots a little bit there, and that's a lone pair of electron on nitrogen there. One, two, three, four. Total of four valence electrons, uh, electron pairs, so tetrahedral. The hybridization situation on nitrogen would be sp3 is four, one. Sp3. Tetrahedral is for sp3. So nitrogen has, has sp3. What about the carbon next to it? Sp3. Sp3. And we also have four, four, uh, four bounds in there. No lone pair, but all bound in there. What about the carbon next to it? There's a double bound in there. Every time you see a double bound, about this oxygen here. Total of four valence electron pairs. Four valence electron pairs requires four orbitals there. That's the three orbitals. Okay, so only the central atom, the SP, uh, the hybridization pattern on the central atom only depends on the uh, electron configuration or the electron uh, uh, number of total number of valence electron pairs, and it only depends on the electron group uh, geometry. If you have sp, uh, if you have tetrahedral, sp3. If you have a trigonal, uh, trigonal planar, sp2. And if you have linear, sp. So double bound is sp2. All single bound, sp3. Okay. And double bound, sp2. And uh, triple bound, sp. So that's what we need you to be able to identify. And uh, in the homework assignments there, you will see we give you a molecule there, and then we label some of the, uh, underline some of the atoms there. We won't ask you which atom has a central atom, which one has an sp3 hybridization, which one has sp2, which one has sp, depending on the bounding situation. If you see a double bound there, sp2. If you see all single bound, well, that's uh, sp3. If you see triple bound, that's sp. Okay, so that's pretty much, and when we try to make predictions about the hybridization, start by drawing Lewis structure. Now you see why Lewis structure is so important. And Gilbert Newton Lewis made a tremendous contribution to modern chemistry, uh, to the theory of modern chemistry, yet he was not recognized for um, uh, his contribution by the Bill Price, and that's very depressing there. So we always start by drawing the Lewis structure. When you deal with covalent valley molecules there, drawing the Lewis structure, Check the formal charge, make sure you have the correct value structure there. And using the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory to determine the geometry on the central atom. Once the central atom geometry is determined, and then look at the electron pair geometry to the cor corresponding hybridization pattern there. Sp3 for tetrahedral, sp2 for trigonal uh, trigonal uh, planner, okay, and sp for linear. And then we can identify and label the orbital overlap in each bound and label the bound with the sigma of pi. Okay. Sometimes we also ask you, giving, the, giving you a structure there, we ask you to determine how many sigma bounds are in there, how many pi bounds are in there. In this particular molecule, we have one, two, two sigma, one, two, two pi. Okay. And double bound means there's a one, uh, for each double bound means there's one sigma, one pi in there. And giving you a long molecule with different atoms connected to one another, Based on the bounding situation, you should be able to determine the total number of bounds in each of the molecules there. Uh, total number of different types of bounds in, in that particular molecule. And this is how we predict the hybridization. There is a correlation between the sp3, sp2, sp to the actual electron group geometry or the uh, uh, or the number of valence electron pairs on the same atom. So that's something that I need you to um, memorize. Okay. And you will see this kind of questions in your homework assignment in chapter nine, chapter in chapter ten, and you will definitely see similar type of questions on the final exam. We'll give you a structure, and they're asking you what happens, say, if you if a molecule undergoes a, a reaction, 
going from all double bound to all single bound. Well, one double bound and then converted into all single bound there. Well, it's sp2 being converted into sp3 and after the uh, chemical reaction. There. So that's something that we we need you to be able to um, uh, we need you to be able to do. Giving you a molecule with different atoms underlined, and we ask you which one has an sp2, sp3, sp hybridization. Again, these are the only three hybridization patterns we need you to know. There are possibilities where the D orbitals comes in, and that's more complex. And even if you go down a little bit further, F orbitals can also come in to participate in the hybridization. But we, don't need, we don't need you to worry about that. And these are the only three hybridization patterns that we need you to, uh, we need you to, uh, uh, to remember. And the next learning objective is something that we will not do. And uh, you do see in your learning objective for chapter 10, uh, you do see a, uh, a, some questions related to this. Now, you don't have to do the questions in the learning objective number three. We're not going to cover this particular topic. It's a self-study topic. Now, we're not covering it, not because it's summer. And in regular semester, we do not talk about this topic either. In Chem 101, I think we covered enough. And if we talk about fluid structure, if we talk about orbital hybridization, I think we have covered enough for it as a prereq for organic chemistry there. So this is a self-study topic. It's not going to be on the third, third exam or on the final exam. And uh, yet, this is something that I do need you to uh, to know. And those of you who are going to be studying, more, taking more chemistry classes there, you probably see similar type of uh, this uh, kind of a topic there. So that's a, an assignment for your uh, summer vacation, I guess, if you go to uh, the beach and Make sure you take your Kindle with you and go through, and go through these uh, the, uh, the Okay, so we have so far. Uh, well, that's uh, that wraps up uh, chapter ten here, and I have probably about. I told you at the beginning I want to go all the way to eleven, but um, I think I'll just stop here. And then you have an exam <laughs> coming up tomorrow, so uh, I want you to release you a little bit early today. So study for the third exam, and then. Uh, uh, we will have an exam tomorrow, and then on Wednesday we will.